Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have a video for you from Judge Baker in Texas. She has a mom who has put in motions to reinstate visitation with her children. But there's some issues with that. I'll let you guys watch. Now that's when we get to it. All right, then, at this time, I will call cause numbers 93156E in the interest of Indiana Stotts Shelton and cause number 98234E in the interest of Arrow Stotts Aguilar and Egypt Stotts Aguilar. We're here today on motion hearings in both cases. These are motions filed by the mother, Quisha Stotts, um, requesting to reinstate visitation. Um, and... Uh, We'll go ahead and let's see, we are, I'm sorry, we are conducting this through Zoom, we're live streaming, and Ms. Galvan is making our record this morning. Okay, we'll go ahead and take announcements, and just a quick reminder to everybody, the issue at hand today is reinstatement of visitation. We're not here to take up anything else, so if there's anything else that comes up, don't be surprised if I cut you off and say we don't have time today. Okay. Okay. Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. We're present, ready, Your Honor. Jerry Moss, for respondent, Mother Lakeisha Stotts. Your Honor, on the note that you had mentioned earlier, I just wanted to uh, let everybody know and reiterate to Ms. Stotts because I did receive the uh, county attorney's exhibits a few minutes ago. I've advised her um, to not answer any questions about the uh, alleged falsified document, Your Honor. Um, to the extent that that was filed, that may have created um, a Fifth Amendment issue. I told her to exercise that right. Now, I will say that I I was never directed to file that document. Um, I can't even remember if I used it as an exhibit or attachment. If it was filed, it wasn't at her direction, and I filed it without knowing that it may have been altered. But regardless, I've been, um, uh, instructed Ms. Dodds to not answer any questions based on the Fifth Amendment right on that in that regard, Your Honor. Okay. And Snowak, on behalf of Cameron Shelton, we're both here and ready, Judge. Stacy Zavala, on behalf of the children. All right, and as I said, Mr. Hammonds had filed a little short report by email concerning his client, Adam Aguilar, who is not present today. Okay, then. Mr. Morales, this is your motion. Your Honor, I will be absolutely brief. Um, I will essentially let the motion speak for itself. Um, if anyone has any questions of Ms. Stops, of course, regarding what she's done, what her participation was, um, I will state that as the motion states, she did complete 21 days of inpatient care. She was discharged, um, as the court is aware. Um, she did not complete, successfully complete, but she did do 21 days. Uh, she's been in outpatient care now going on nearly five weeks. I think after this week will be five full weeks of outpatient care. Um, Your Honor, we acknowledge that she's made some pretty significant mistakes and made some stupid choices and maybe her behavior hasn't been perfect. But I, I will say one thing, um, I've had never had a client that's been more in contact and she obviously cares about her kids. I think when she's with her kids, the visitation has been appropriate um and um the kids I, it seems like the kids miss her they miss their visits i think it would be beneficial to have her visiting the kids again um and and that's all i have i'm not going to call her if anybody wants to call her again i'm not going to have her asking questions about about the document being altered but other than that if they want to ask about what she did or what she didn't do while she was in care um go for it All right. Well, um, you you're not calling her as a witness today. No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Um, let me just see. Can't shortcut a few things, and and obviously, if, you know, counsel. If any of you have objections, just make them. But um, do we have any current drug testing on Miss Dots? Yes, Your Honor. She drug screen. Um, in the month of October, and it came back a negative dilute. Just right. a year. What was the? What were the dates? Um, 
October 29th. 29th? Yes, ma'am. And what, what was the drug test prior to that? The one in September was negative for UA. Um, and what we received back from TDATS was a uh, refusal for the hair. So her September was negative or negative dilute? Just negative? Just negative. That she refused the hair. Yes. And, and, and what judge, judge, just looking at the September um, negative UA, it states on that one negative dilute on that also on the September 13th one. All right, let's make sure we're looking at the same one. So you were looking at one for September 13th. UA yes, was negative dilute. Yes, ma'am. Was that the same date as for the hair, or are we talking about different screens? I think that's the same date as the hair one. Is that correct, Tiffany? Yes, ma'am. All right, and what program is she currently in? That has not been reported to me. We're, we're not sure what, um, after my conversation with Tiffany on Friday, we're not sure what outpatient she's in. I know the letters that were sent um, stated she would been referred to an outpatient. I don't know if that's through Serenity or through some other program that she was referred to. Mr. Morales, can you shed any light on that for me? Yes. Can, can you all hear me? I'm sorry. I think. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. We can hear you. Okay. I'm sorry. I think Zoom did an update and I'm not as familiar with the new system on my phone. Um, Ms. Dots, um, I know you told me, um, what is the outpatient program you're going through now? It's Serenity Outpatient. Okay. Yeah, so she is in Serenity. She's began that pretty much immediately after her release. And so I, I'm pretty sure this is her fifth week. One, so she's four and a half weeks through. And I believe it's a 16-week program. Is that right, Leticia? Yes, yes sir. Thank you. How many times a week? Three times a week, Your Honor, plus an individual, so four times a week. For how long each session? How long are you there? Three hours. And the individual is one hour. Why'd you refuse the hair test back in September? Um, Your Honor, I didn't refuse the hair test. My hair was in braids and the nurse said that she wasn't going to cut my hair because it was in braids. I told her she could cut it and she said no. This is the second time that's happened to me. Um, also, Your Honor, my <laughs> hair in the back was not braided. And I told her she could also cut that, but it was too short for her to cut. So she said no. All right, Ms. Brown, did you get any uh -huh. kind of information from the lab about this? Um, the only thing that the lab reported back is a refusal to test. It didn't say anything about her hair being too short um, or anything of the such. All right. <clears throat> well, Ms. Stotts, I mean, I've got concern that your last two UAs that we've had are negative dilute. I mean, that's not a true negative. So, um, you know, that's concerning that that you're, I mean, it, it, it's an indicator that you're trying to flush your system before you go in for a UA. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. That's what it, that's the red flag that comes up when we get a negative dilute. Somebody drinks a lot of water or drinks a lot of Gatorade or drinks a lot of something else to try to flush their system or to make, make it come back negative. And, 
And so it's it's of concern that we've had two in a row that are, you know, are negative to Luke. Um, okay, those are the questions that I had for the moment. So then, Mr. Morales, do you have any other witnesses you want to call today? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right, Mr. Trout, do you have any witnesses you want to call today? Um, yes, ma'am, we'd call, Mom. All right, Ms. Stotts, if you'll mm -hmm. unmute for me and raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you'll give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I know your attorney has advised you of your Fifth Amendment rights uh, regarding an issue that may or may not come up today. Um, so um, I will just remind you as well that you do have a privilege against self-incrimination in anything that might incriminate you uh, in criminal activity. Um, and uh, you do not have to answer those questions if you wish to invoke that Fifth Amendment right. All right, Mr. Trouch, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Stites, your attorney announced earlier you did not complete the serenity in inpatient rehab, correct? Correct. Okay. And you were there for 21 days? Correct. And this is the third time you failed to complete a inpatient rehab throughout this case, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, you were at the last two previous hearings where the judge court ordered you to finish those inpatient rehab and then follow up with outpatient, correct? Correct. Okay. And when you're in inpatient rehab, why did you get kicked out this time? Um, honestly, I don't know. Okay. Um, did you receive a letter from the rehab? Yes. Okay. And did that letter state um, that it was non-compliance with the facility rules? No. Are you sure about that? Yes. And <clears throat> they didn't tell you why you got kicked out? You just got kicked out? They said it was because of my attitude again, so which is not, not a reason. It, it appears to be a reason, but you weren't, you were kicked out because you wouldn't follow the rules. No. Okay. Um, again, though, you think you get to make up the rules of how this is going to go? No. Three times you've been kicked out of rehab. Two times I've been kicked out. Okay. The second time I left. Okay. You have failed to complete it three times. Yes. Okay. And you sent letters to, you sent a letter to Ms. Brown? Yes. Okay. That was not the complete letter, was it? Yes. It was a letter that I received, yes. Okay. That was not the complete letter, was it? Yes. Okay. You didn't alter that document in any way? Objection, no. Your Honor. I've already instructed that we were going to be, I've instructed my client. So if, if he's going to continue this line of question, I'd ask to have a, a room with my client. I'm I'm good on that, Your Honor, just as long as her answer was that. Okay. Did you revoke your release of information? For Ms. Brown, yes. Okay. You know you're aware your service plans are re you're required to have a release of information with the department. Yes. Okay. And yet you still revoke it. For Ms. Brown, yes. For my attorney, no. She can get any information she needs from my attorney. Ms. Brown's your caseworker, correct? Correct. She needs to know what is going on with your case, correct? Okay. Okay. So you revoked your release of information? Yes. Okay. I'll pass the witness at this time, Your Honor. Oh, but you're not going to lose All right. Uh, Mr. Morales, any questions? Ms. Dots, um, you did complete 21 days before your discharge at Serenity, correct? Yes. And did you participate in all the counseling and all the services they were pro provided during that 21 day period? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you feel like you, you learned 
you know, uh, what they were trying to, you know, you, you learned some things while you were in there. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, have you been able to utilize any of what you learned since you've been out? Yes, sir. Has that helped you maintain sobriety? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, do you think moving forward that you can, you can maintain sobriety? Yes, sir. Are you continuing to learn um, mm -hmm. as you are completing 10 hours a week of outpatient care? Yes, sir. Um, prior to your visits being revoked, were were they going well? Yes. Okay. Did the kids seem happy to see you? Yes. Were you often doing their hair uh, when during the visits? Yes, sir. Did they seem to enjoy that? Yes, sir. Well, okay. sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it's a bit of a chore, huh? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll pass the witness. All right, uh, Mr. Nowak, any questions? No questions, Judge. Thank you. Ms. Zavala. So up until right now, had you told Ms. Brown um, what you were doing for outpatient? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you provide her any documentation? Um, like a proof of me being in outpatient service? Yes. No, not that I'm aware. Who's the contact there? Um, Justin, I don't know his last name. Um, and this but is, I know my instructor's name is Justin. This is through Serenity? Yes, Serenity Outpatient. Okay, because Serenity Inpatient won't take you back. Um, I didn't try. Okay. I'm sure I would have to wait 30 days before I could. Judge, she cut out and I couldn't hear her. Okay, would you repeat your answer, please? Oh, I'm not sure if they'll take me back, but I'm sure I have to wait a 30-day period before I can attempt to go back. Okay, Mr. Trout, any further questions of this witness? Not of this witness at this time, Your Honor. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for her? No, Judge. Excuse me, Your Honor. I got one question. Sure. Ms. Stites, do you know who Erica Vera is? My counselor. Was she at Serenity? Yes, inpatient. Okay. Thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. <clears throat> All right. Then. Anybody else have any, any other questions for her? Not for Ms. Stites, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Mr. Trucks, you can call your next witness. Tiffany Brown. All right. Ms. Brown, raise your right hand for me. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you will give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, Your Honor. Good. All right. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Brown, um, you're the caseworker on this case, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And did you receive the exhibits that I sent out? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, did Ms. Stotts send you a letter um, about a month ago stating that she had been at, done with uh, Serenity Rehab? Yes, sir. Okay. And well, did she email you a copy of that letter? She or emailed a picture. A picture of it. Yes. Um, and can you tell me what that letter stated? Um. Yes. And what did it state? It says Miss Laquisha Shanice Thoughts was previously at resident of Plainview Serenity Inc. completing our drug and alcohol treatment program. Thank you for your time and attention to this matter. Sincerely, Erica Vera. Okay. And did you receive what I sent out, exhibit number one? Yes. Okay. And is that an accurate depiction of the picture you received from Miss Thoughts? Yes. Okay. Um, and this was what Ms. Stotts emailed you um, once she was discharged from Serenity? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I'd ask to admit exhibit number one. Uh, it's the letter that was just testified to and that Ms. Um, Brown received from Ms. Stotts. No objection. No objection. No objection. 
All right, Petitioner's Exhibit 1 will be admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Ryan, did you reach out to Serenity? Yes. To see if Ms. Dots had completed? In yes. The and yes. did I'm, you... I'm sorry, I didn't get the last part of that question, Mr. I'm sorry. Um, and to follow up to make sure that Ms. Stotts had completed Serenity. Yes. Okay. Um, is that the information that you received? No, sir. Okay. Did you receive this information through emails? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> did you receive a copy of the letter that was mailed to Ms. Stotts? From Serenity. It's my understanding that they gave it to her upon her request of discharge. Okay. But did you, when you emailed with Serenity, did they send you a copy of the letter that they had? Yes. Actually? Okay. Um, and was that the same letter that Ms. Stotts had sent you? No, sir. Okay. Um, did you receive exhibit number two? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, is the First page of exhibit number two, is that the letter that Serenity sent you? Yes. Okay. And can you tell me what that letter says? It says, to whom it may concern, Ms. Laquisha Shanice Thoughts was previously at resident of Plainview Serenity Center, Inc., completing our drug and alcohol treatment program on September 20th, 2024, Ms. Thoughts was enrolled in the female intensive residential program for approximately 30 days. Ms. Thoughts was discharged on October 9th, 2024 from the program due to non-compliance with facility rules after repeated interventions. Ms. Thoughts was referred to outpatient treatment for continued services if she chooses. Thank you for your time and attention to this matter. Sincerely, Eric Cabrera. Thank you, ma'am. So essentially it's the same letter but the new one is missing, or the one Ms. Stotts has sent you is missing the main part paragraph stating that she did not complete due to non-compliance with the facility rules. Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, and that is the letter, that's the emails and letters you received from Serenity. This exhibit number two. No objection. Can you hear me, Ms. Brown? Yes, sir. Okay. That and that is the letter you received from Serenity. Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, I'd ask to admit exhibit number two as the letter that was just testified to. No objection. No objection. No objection. Our petitioner's exhibit two will be admitted. And so you heard Ms. Stotts earlier testify that her understanding she got discharged because of her attitude. Is that correct? Yes, sir. But according to Serenity, it was due to her noncompliance with the rules. Yes, sir. Um, and again, she did not complete a program that she needs to just do 30 days to complete to be under the court order. She did not complete their 30 day program. No. Um, did she tell you since she sent you that letter? Has she told you where she was doing uh, outpatient? No, sir. And have you ever received any certificates or any letters stating that she is in the program and that she has completed four or five weeks? No, sir. Um, have you tried to speak to Ms. Stotts about whether she's doing outpatient? I had a meeting set up with Ms. Stotts on the 30th. However, I was on call and got pulled into an emergency. So I did not make that meeting. Okay. Um, did Ms. Stotts make that meeting? She let me know when she was at home, but I was unavailable. I worked until midnight that day. Okay. Um, have Has she mentioned to you at all that she was in outpatient? No, and without a signed release, I can't get that information. Okay. All right. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Morales? No questions, Your Honor. Mr. Nowak? No questions, Judge. All right. Uh, Ms. Zavala? No questions, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Trout, anything further of this witness? Nothing further of this witness at this time, Your Honor. I'll just have a statement to make. <clears throat> All right. Um, 
as in like argument? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Argument as far as to. Okay. All right, then. Um, Mr. Nowak, anything to present today? No, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Zavala? No, Your Honor. Okay, everybody rest and close today? Rest and close, Your Honor. Rest and close, Your Honor. Rest and close. Right. Rest and close. I'd just like to note that uh, Cameron Shelton does not object to this visitation, does not object to the motion. And I, I didn't mean to step on your toes, Daniel. I probably said that no. out of turn. No, you're good. Message. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. So noted. Okay. Um, Mr. Morales, do you wish to make any argument? Just briefly, Your Honor. Um, and, and, and I acknowledge, and, and Lakeisha would do the same. She's made some some, some mistakes in this. Um and you know she's slowly addressing it she's you know probably minimizing my use as i can understand but you know she's been told time and time again that's an issue that she needs to address and she's she's working on it she's still working on it your honor um the fact of the matter is though i don't think that anything has as far as i've been reported since i've been on substituted on this case anything inappropriate during the visits they've gone well i think the, the kids enjoy it they, they bond and spend time with lakeisha she's going to remain at i mean unless something in the in the future happens that that is significant change i think the kids are going to remain with family members regardless of what happens moving forward and so they probably have some interaction with miss thoughts i would imagine that maybe we could keep that and hopefully keep it and monitor it while we can in a healthy way um, you know, the kids enjoy it and I think it's beneficial. Um, and so we just, we just ask the court to consider, you know, the positives as well as, as the many negatives that the departments are going to, the department is going to pull out because I, we admit there are some in this case. Um, with that being said, your honor, we, I do think it is in the kid's best interest to resume the visits. All right, Mr. Nowak, any argument you wish to make, sir? I'll just uh, piggyback on Jerry and, and just again remind the court that Mr. Shelton is not opposed to mom having visits. Thank you. All right. All right, Mr. Trout. Yeah, Honor, in the throughout this case, um, Ms. Stotts has done, she's worked her services except for staying clean. Um, she's been court ordered multiple times to do her inpatient rehab. Um, we're still getting negative dilute drug screens. We're still getting refusals on hair follicles. And now we're getting um, what essentially appears to be falsified letters, trying to pass it off as that she completed the court order 30 day rehab, which she didn't. Um, and even today, still stating that that is the letter that she got, even though there's we have the copy of the other letter that was just put in exhibits that state she did it she was discharged for non-compliance with facility rules not her attitude but for non-compliance she's steadily showing a pattern of not changing habits she's steadily showing pattern of um defiance to all rules of the way that this case is supposed to be going if she would have buckled down done any of the three times she's been in rehab and just completed them we wouldn't be here today um but she just constantly refuses to, to do what she was court ordered to do and to follow the rules. Um, for some reason, she has it that she can make up her own rules when it comes to this. Um, I, I don't believe until she completes her rehab and gives a regular negative drug screen um, that we can move forward on the visitations at this time and reward her for doing exactly what she's not supposed to be doing. Um, I believe it's this, I, and I understand that visits had gone well with the children, um, but they were stopped due to mom not doing her services, not doing rehab, drug screens being bad. Um, and we're still at that spot. Um, we had a hearing about this a little over a month ago to almost two months ago about mom needed to complete her drug rehab. And now we're back here again with her asking for visits when she still has not done it and failed to do it and tried to send letters passing him off that she had. Um, and I don't believe she should be rewarded for, for that behavior. 
That's all I got. All right, Ms. Zavala, argument and or recommendation. Um, Your Honor, I, I am very concerned of what's kind of happened over the last last bit. I, I know that Indiana would love to visit with, with her mom, so with the other kids, um, but I, I have real concerns. We are one month out from a final and to start and stop those visitations for the kids is incredibly hard on them. And, and I would like to note that Indiana is really struggling with the same behaviors we're seeing mom have. Um, she, she learns from those behaviors. We're trying to get Indiana's behavior under control. And I, I'm just really concerned about starting and stopping and you know, what, what she's learning in terms of her mom's behavior. All right. Ms. Valdi, do you have anything else as far as your recommendation? Anything else? No, I mean, at this time, I mean, I, I've got the dual role and I know for sure Indiana would like to see her and she's old enough to, to state that. But I really don't believe it's in any of the kids' best interest to start it back up again when we're one month away from a final to figure out what's what's going to happen ultimately. So in their best interest, I, I would say no to restarting that visitation at the time. Indiana six, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, <clears throat> Miss Dots, I, you know, this was really just so straightforward. Um, uh, And, and and we've attempted this three times now. I mean, I feel like I've worked with you, ma'am. You know, I mean, all all the way through the case. You know, you've had issues. You you didn't like your attorney. You had problems with with you know with your first attorney. You you know everything had to go through your attorney. The de I mean the department. You know, uh, Department's been the bad guy as far as you're concerned. The whole case, you know, those folks, they're just, your whole attitude about it is, you know, they're out to get you, you know, and, and your, your level of cooperation with this process has been almost none. Um, you know, which, which is very concerning because these folks are really here to try to help you and help make sure that we don't end up right back in this position six, eight months down the road with your kids and, and then have to pull kids back out of the home. You know, I mean, that's, that is the whole point of working services is let's, let's work our services. Let's learn from our mistakes, acknowledge <laughs> our mistakes, make those changes demonstrate that that you have made those changes for a period of time so that we feel you know marginally comfortable about sending the children home and that the children will be in a safe environment and and you have had every opportunity to do those things you know and and you've worked your services i i probably have some question in the back of my mind about how much you've really learned from it because you haven't been very open-minded about the whole process. You know, all the way through, you've you've wanted to dictate how this is going to work. You know, you, you've wanted to control that. You've wanted to say how, when, where, and why. And then when I have even ordered you to do a specific thing that I thought might salvage the situation you blew that off too once and i guess twice actually but i know once just i mean a, a little more than a month ago i mean we we went we went through this whole thing and so 
you know, what that says to me, your your inability to to complete that 30 days is, you know, I mean, the third go round, your inability to do it on the third try tells me that you just don't want to. You don't want to do it. You're not going to do it. And, and maybe you don't really care how that impacts your, your, your children. You know, I guess, I mean, I, I just think if somebody told me I had to do something for 30 days to, to save my relationship with my children, I mean, I, I can't imagine that there'd be anything that I wouldn't do for 30 days. Anything. I'd do the same for my dog for 30 days. So, you know, it, it, it troubles me and you need to get back on camera. It troubles me that you aren't willing to do something for 30 days to hopefully get your children home. You know, that, that really worries me about, okay, we, if we send the kids home, you know, what, you know, is she going to stay sober for six months? I mean, she couldn't, she couldn't even muster up doing something for 30 days. You know, it's just a, it's a level of commitment that concerns me, much less the possibility of the fact that you may have altered that letter from Serenity. You know, it certainly has that appearance. And Indiana is what Ms. Zavala is saying to you. She's struggling with these same things. She's struggling with being truthful. She's struggling with wanting to do things her own way and not listening to anybody else, not listening to authority, not listening to the adults in her lives, not following what teachers and daycare people and, you know, all the people that should be telling a six-year-old what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, she's ignoring. And, and, and then having a great deal of difficulty with being truthful, which is, at, at age six, is really scary to me. You know, most six-year-olds are, are they're pretty forthright and, and you know, it's just really, it's really worrisome that we've got a child that, that is that young and is already manipulating to that degree and thinks that it's okay. So she, I mean, like it or not, children do mimic their parents' behaviors and it, it, it you know, I think this is a certainly a good test case for that. You know, I don't doubt that you love your children, but you just aren't you're not showing me that you've got that level of commitment that it takes to safely and successfully raise three children. And they're very young and they're very impressionable. So I am not going to restart visits. I think it can be really, really hard on the kids. Um, I guess we'll see what you accomplish between now and December 12th when we will recall this case. We've already, we've called it. It's in recess. You know, uh, probably be a really good idea to be providing Ms. Brown with updates about your progress in outpatient treatment. Um, you know, and, and signing a release to let her independently speak with those folks. Um, you know, it's just that it's the secrecy and the it, making everything so difficult when it doesn't have to be. Can I make a statement? Nope. Okay. Thank you. Your attorney, everybody's rested and closed. This is my time to talk. Sorry. That's my suggestion to you. So, um, You've got till December 12th and, and, um, you know, I suggest you have a good, long, hard discussion with all that about your attorney.
All right. I appreciate everybody's time this morning. Uh, we're going to leave things just as they are. And my, and my order, once again, stands that mom is to complete a 30-day inpatient treatment program. It's just out there. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Thank you all. It's pretty obvious to me, anyway, that this mom has no intentions of implementing anything that she's supposed to be learning at these sessions. She's not learning anything. She's only doing it to get by. She has no intentions of doing any of it. And the way they describe the daughter, she's only six years old and she's just like her mom. She lies to get what she wants or to get away with what she wants. And she doesn't listen. She doesn't do anything she's told to do. Basically, she's a six-year-old brat and mom is an adult brat. That's what it seems to me. I mean, they're like mother, like daughter. She's, she's taught her daughter to be just like her. Unfortunately, she's only six. When she's 13, it's going to be much worse. So I wish this mom would learn something so that she could actually work with her children and be a good mom, but she's not going to. That's just my opinion. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.